Hello, good afternoon everyone. Um, after me having a day off yesterday, I hope you're all well and everything's okay with you. I'm just going to be reading today from Zechariah chapter 2. i am just, uh, just come back from planting some stuff in the garden again. Beautiful day in between. It's a funny sort of day. One minute's really hot out there. Then it gets really chilly when the sun goes behind the clouds. But uh, not bad. Let's pray anyway. Lord, we thank you that we can come around your word yet again. Lord, thank you, Lord, that we can have one day rest a week. Lord, it's good to have that day. You wanted us to have a Sabbath rest. Lord, and I thank you that yesterday I did. And I pray that you would help us as we study today. That we will have refreshed. We are refreshed and new vigour and new hunger for the word of God today. So I pray that you will help us as we study your word together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so it was sees a man with a yardstick. Zechariah sees a man with a yardstick as a vision. And I lifted up mine eyes again and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then Sida said, I, whither goest thou? And he said unto me, To measure Jerusalem, to see what is the breadth thereof, and what is the length thereof. Do you like measuring things? I just had to measure a curtain pole for my son's room. I hate measuring because I never know whether to measure in millimetres, centimetres, feet and inches. The whole thing confuses me. But I managed to do it and that was it. But, you know, this man had a measuring stick. And, uh, you know, he has a line as well. We'll read a bit more on that. And behold, the angel that talked with me went forth and another angel went out to meet him. And said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls, for the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I saith, For I, saith the Lord, will come unto her, a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. Sounds like God is saying that uh, he was going to put a wall around her, a wall of fire, because uh, Jerusalem would grow so big, it would be too big to have walls. I know there are still some old bits of the walls of Jerusalem still left today. But it's if you look at uh, photographs, it's expanded out, haven't it? But God said he will put a wall of protection. I think the Israelites, I was looking, wondered, they've got um, a protection net thing. That if a missile comes in, like from Gaza or anywhere else, sets off an alarm and then it actually shoots them down before they get to land. I know the occasion of one gets through, but, uh, you know, that's the same kind of thing. God has said he will put a wall of fire of protection around his people, those who are faithful to him. That includes us, like God's put a protective hedge around Job. But when Satan tempted to take the hedge away to see if Job would stand, but, uh, you know, that's just, just by the side or down a little side route. That was just a thought, thinking. And said unto him, then, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as a town without walls, for the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of oh, if he'd see the glory and experience the glory of the power of God like they experienced in the wilderness where, where the glory of God come down, come down on that temple they were terrified they were on their faces before God and even in Moses when he came out his face glowed with the presence of God they asked Moses to cover up his face because they were terrified but one day we'll be in God's presence wouldn't that be wonderful and we won't have any sin in it, so we won't die in his presence. Now, if we were in his presence, now we would die. If our sin wasn't covered, and our sin isn't covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, because God can't abort to look at, bear to look at sin. I'm going off track, but I'm enjoying this today. Things are coming into my mind. God says, when you learn God's word, he will bring it back to your remembrance, so... It's like faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I like to read it, but also follow along with audible as well, playing it. So I'm hearing it, seeing it, and then I'm digesting it instead. 
Ah, the glory of the Lord will be in the midst. Uh, is the glory of God in your place? You know, let's ask God to show for his presence to be real to us so that we might know him better. Verse 6. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. <coughs> the Lord's going to bring him back from captivity in the north. Yeah, praise God, and the Lord can bring us back from spiritual captivity when we become Christians and when we're delivered, because we can be delivered of many demons when we've, we've been out there in the world and doing the things of the world and its practices. But we can come back and know God's presence. God can come and set us free. And uh, he was going to talk about bringing them out to the north country, out of slavery, out of bondage. And God can set you free today if you feel like you're in any kind of spiritual bondage. Turn to Jesus, speak to the enemy, speak to Satan and he will flee in using the name and the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. See, after the seventy years, God was calling them back. God was calling them back into the land of Israel, into Judah and Jerusalem. Verse 10, Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and I dwell in the midst of thee. See, they repent, turned away, obeyed God, and God comes and dwells with them. And God will come and dwell with you if you're walking in faith and you are walking in repentance and holiness. God's presence will be real to you. He says he will come, he will never forsake you. Or go, you know, he'll always be with you if you stay faithful to him. And God is calling them back. And God has given an opportunity today for those who have fallen away from Christ. Come back, he says. I want you to come back and I want you to dwell with me. And I want you to live with me and I want to live in you. That we may share fellowship one together. That's what God wants for everyone. Praise the Lord. Actually, that's so good. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For lo, I come and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of them. Many nations will come to the land. Yeah, there are many people living in, in, around the Holy Land, as we call it, Jerusalem today. Many people are going there to live and work. And, you know, it's happening in modern day times as well. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people. Yeah, many people will come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto them, unto thee. That's the angel giving the interpretation there. Eh? And verse 12, and the Lord shall inherit Judah, his portion in the holy land, and shall choose Jerusalem again. That's talking about Christ's second coming when he comes to rule in Jerusalem. Be silent, all, o all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. Right, let's look at the footnotes here. I don't, you know, let's look at them. I've said what I feel, but this is what the ttb.org, through the Bible network, you can look it up and receive these if you want to. You can download them. Um, and verse 1 refers to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 8. 38 and 39 and Ezekiel 40 verse 3 to 5 and also Revelations 11 verse 1 and 2 when God begins to measure the temple and Jerusalem he is getting ready to move again in behalf of both yeah the end times come in we have to go there after the first seven years of tribulation first but then when that's over, Jesus comes, stands on the Mount Olives, and then he was reigns for a thousand years on the throne in Jerusalem. Let's continue. Jerusalem is to be rebuilt in Zechariah's day. And verse 10, Jerusalem is to be built and restored in the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, who will reign there in person. Can't wait for that day. And we as saints and believers in God will reign with him in Jerusalem. Verse 11, the nations will come there to worship. Wonderful. See chapter 14, verse 16. 
and Isaiah 2 verse 1 to 5, where all the nations of the world will be drawn to Jerusalem to worship God, to worship Christ Jesus. There we are. So, you know, that's a good little bit today. And uh, I think we will leave tomorrow, leave chapter 3 for tomorrow, for Sunday. It's a Sunday for our communion service. So if you want to join with Louise and myself, we'll break bread tomorrow and uh, share with it with you. Let's read in my notes in my Bible if there's any additional information. Verse 6 to 7 in chapter 2, many of the captive Israelites did not return to Jerusalem because they preferred to stay with the wealth they had accumulated in Babylon. But Zechariah instructed them to leave Babylon quickly. This was an urgent request because Babylon would be destroyed and because its decadent culture could cause his people to forget their spiritual priorities. Jesus says to us, come out from the world, come out from there. Come out, and God is saying to us, come out of the world. We should be in the world, but not of the world, doing and partaking in its practices, in all the things that God warns us about. And he's calling this people out of Babylon here to say, look, so that you don't continue to fall into their idolship and idolatry and witchcraft and occultism and everything else. God is saying, come out from among them and be separate. This was an urgent request because Babylon would be destroyed and because its decadent culture would cause his people to forget their spiritual priorities. And it's so easy for us to get caught up in things that are not of God and forget our spiritual priorities. First, our first duty is to God, to serve him, to love him, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your strength and also to love your neighbour as yourself. You know, we must come out and be separate. About 90% of the Israelites rejected these warnings and remained in Babylon. Verse 8. Believers are precious to God. Psalm 116 verse 15. They are his very own children. Psalm 103 13. Treating any believer unkindly is the same as treating God that way. As Jesus told his disciples, when we help others, we are helping him. When we neglect them, we are neglecting him. Matthew 25, verse 34 to 46. Be careful, therefore, how you treat fellow believers. That, that is the way you are headed. It, it's same as that is the way you're treating God. If you treat a, a fellow believers badly, you're treating God the same way. Uh, chapter 2, verse 9 to 12, the footnote says, Me, uh, um, well, anyway, me may refer to the Messiah who is in the end, will judge all who have oppressed God's people. God promises to live among the people, and he says that many nations will come to know him. John 1, verse 14, and Revelation 21. Verse, 30, verse 3, verse 11 to 12, commentary in here says, God did not forget his words to Abraham. The entire world will be blessed because of you. And you can see the promise God gave to Abraham in Genesis 12, verse 3. All the nations of the world will be blessed because of God's people, uh, the Jewish people. Abraham, the father of the nation of Israel, was promised that his descendants would bless the whole world. Since the coming of Jesus the Messiah, this promise is being fulfilled. People from all nations are coming to God through Jesus Christ. 31, uh, no, three verse, we won't go on to that. That's tomorrow's study. And we'll have a look at Zechariah's visions tomorrow. And we'll look at an outline. But for today, we will stop there. So, brothers and sisters, it's a shortish one today, but I hope you find it a beneficial. There's been a lot of meat in that. And like we're told to eat the meat and spit out the bones, what doesn't apply to you, you can spit, you know, don't take it on board. But if there's anything in the message today that is for you, take it, absorb it, take it before the Lord, ask God to show you what his purpose is for your life and whether you're walking in sin or you're walking in faith that he will help you and carry you through so let's pray 
Lord, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord, that we, you were precious. We are precious to you, and we are, you were precious to us, Lord, for those who believe you, Lord, that you have called us out of Babylon, spiritual Babylon. You've called us out of the world, the kingdom of darkness, and you've called us to the kingdom of light. Lord, you want us to be separate, Lord. You want us to be in the world, loving the people and caring for people, but also not doing the things and the practices that the world do. So I pray for your people, your church, Lord, you would open our eyes to your word, that, oh Lord, we would come before you in repentance, and we will walk faithfully before you. Lord, I pray for those who are serving you today, those who are serving you and helping other people. Lord, those who are looking after people in hospitals and the community and care homes, I pray your protection over them, Lord, that they would come to know you as Lord and Saviour. They would be a witness to those they're caring for. Lord, I pray for our government, Lord, they will continue to, they will begin to seek you, Lord, because I don't think they're seeking you in a lot of their decisions. But Lord, I pray for your help and your your uh, direction for them, that they may come to you and repent of their sins and walk in faith and victory in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for those who feel lonely, who are still self-isolating, who are fearful about going out, that you would bless them, you would be with them, and you would show them, even the believers that are frightened, Lord, that you would show them that you were with them, that you promised you'd never leave them or forsake them, even into the end of the age, that you would be always with them. Lord, as if they remain faithful to you, Lord, help us to take the truths of Psalm 91. Lord, if we dwell in the secret place, we seek you first, then we will know the blessing of God. We will know your protection over our lives. So we thank you, Lord, for your blessings now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Keep you safe. I look forward to sharing communion with you tomorrow. Not quite sure what time, but you will be uploaded. So be blessed today. If you have any prayer requests, please send them to me on my private messenger our messenger and I will pray for you in confidence, in secret, that only you and I will know about it, unless you want it to be public, that we can pray for one another. In Jesus' name, God bless. Amen.